Are you a candidate for 2020? I'm thinking about how the hell to get out from under that question fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm not uh, taking anything off the table. But I'm not sitting around. I haven't been running around to the most obvious states. Am I going to think about it? Yeah, I'm going to think about it. In a party like it's 2004, former Secretary of State John Kerry yesterday hinting he's not ruling out a possible presidential run in 2020. Joining us now, someone who's a bit more direct about potentially running for president in 2020, former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President Obama, Julian Castro. He served previously as the mayor of San Antonio, and he's the author of the book, An Unlikely Journey, Waking Up from My American Dream. Mr. Secretary, it's great to have you here with us this morning. Thanks for having me. So we were joking in the break on Tuesday on Hardball. <laughs> Chris Matthews got you two very likely to run for president. Can we take you a step further now on Thursday? What is the next step? Extremely really? likely. Or you can yes. announce it. Yes. Highly likely. I, 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 yeah, we can just find Let's these. Let's go to yeah. yes. I, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, you know, very likely, likely, whatever uh, terms we want to use. You know, I, I've said for a while, I've been very straightforward that, that I'm thinking about running, that I'm likely to do that. I'm going to make a decision before the end of the year. And um, as you and I were talking a little bit ago uh, off camera, you know, the season is almost upon us, right? Yeah. And so it's no secret. People see out there that you're probably going to have a whole bunch of folks who are running in 2020. Uh, I think that's going to be good for the Democratic Party after you know, what happened in 2016. I think that the voters are going to want um, to see a whole bunch of folks up there with new ideas, uh, different experiences, and feel like everybody's voice is heard. Uh, and that afterward, that the Democratic nominee in 2020 is going to be stronger because of that. So what do you bring to the table that a lot of these familiar faces who've run before perhaps do not? You know, we see John Kerry saying he might want to get it. Maybe Joe Biden. We'll see Bernie Sanders, some other folks like that. It will be a big field. There's no question about it. How do you rise to the top of that field? Well, you know, if, if I run, it'll be because I have a strong vision for the future of this country. Uh, I believe that we need a 21st century blueprint for opportunity so that we ensure that families can thrive in this 21st century with the right education and skills, with health care, um, with good job opportunities. And uh, I have shown that I can get things done at the local level and at the federal level. And so everybody is going to bring their own experience and their own talent and their own voice. Uh, but uh, if I get into the race, I look forward to going and making the case. There's, right? there's an argument out there that if you're running against Donald Trump, you've got to be combative. You've got to fight with him. You're a very smart, very low-key guy, I think it's fair to say. You've got energy, obviously. You've run a city and, and the HUD. Would you be up for a fight with Donald Trump? Yeah, you know, I, and I've said this to folks. I don't think that we're going to beat Donald Trump by trying to be Donald Trump. Mm. Uh, I think that you're going to uh, win in 2020 or against Donald Trump, especially who tries to drag everybody down by connecting with the American people and keeping the focus on what you're going to do for them. That doesn't mean that you don't stand up. Of course, you have to stand up for yourself and stand up to Trump. But I think what we can't lose sight of is that people want somebody to vote for. They want something to believe in. And so it's the candidate that offers a compelling, positive, and strong vision for the future of the country that resonates with the voter and his or her family that I think is going to win. And, you know, I mean, in 2020, it's not going to be 2016. People know a lot more about what Donald Trump is all about, right? right? And he has a record. And, uh, and I think that the contrast there uh, is the positive and the plan versus the negative and going backwards. We saw some of that success in the midterms, people running on the issues and not against Donald Trump. Uh, Susan Page is in Washington with a question for you. Susan? I, I do have a question. You know, there are two ways to remove uh, Donald Trump from the Oval Office. One is to defeat him in 2020. The other is to impeach him uh, or attempt to impeach him uh, before then. And I wonder, what, what are your thoughts about the opportunities and risks for Democrats as they look at the Mueller report when it comes out, when they look at things like the prospective pardon of Paul Manafort? Should Democrats seriously think about impeachment proceedings, or is that a trap, do you think, for Democrats? Well, I think the four first order of business, and this is going to begin in January, is to get serious about these investigations. You know, uh, Adam Schiff, the ranking member on the Intelligence Committee, and others on that Intelligence Committee, including my own brother, mm -hmm. who's on it, <laughs> have made very clear that in so many ways, this investigation has not tried to not 
because of the Republican leadership, leadership had an opportunity to try and get to the full truth. And whether it's that issue or a number of other issues, Donald Trump's finances and you know, maybe more to the point, some of the missteps of this administration on policy and, and on procedure, they need to have full and robust investigations. And then, uh, you know, where those investigations lead, uh, I think is a separate question, but they need to get those investigations going. All right, Julian Castro, thanks so much for being here. Maybe next week you'll come back and just nail it down for us. <laughs> <laughs> take this. But just get closer and closer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just baby you steps can say here. It right now if you want to. <laughs> yeah. you we can last chance. Okay. I'll probably, if I do it, I'll do it in Texas, <laughs> in my home okay. state. So. Mr. Right. Secretary, thank you very much. Again, the book is An Unlikely Journey. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on Morning Joe, Nancy Pelosi has moved one step closer to becoming House Speaker. She's still facing opposition, though, from within her own party. But our next guest says rookies need not apply. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel joins us next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.